Good morning. Welcome to Bethany Lutheran Church. I am Reverend Nate Preisinger, and I am privileged to serve as one of the pastors here at Bethany. I serve alongside Pastor Gary Sandberg, who is here. He's, he's back from whatever warm place he was for a few days, uh, as well as pastoral intern Rachel Patterson, who will be giving our proclamation this morning. But I wanted to say thank you so much for taking time out of your holiday weekend to be here at Bethany. It is always good to be together uh, and great to be gathered for worship this morning. Uh, just a brief word about worship this morning. It is the second Sunday of Epiphany. And Epiphany, as you might remember, I told you this a couple weeks ago, Epiphany is the season where we have all of these aha moments about who Jesus is and what Jesus came to do. And you're going to hear that again in the gospel reading from John this morning as John the Baptist and some of the disciples have that aha moment about who Jesus is and what he's all about. Uh, so we look forward to reading that together and hearing God's promises spoken to us in those ways this morning. Also about worship this morning, we're going to be inviting new members into the Bethany family. That is so exciting, always a great moment. So that's happening at this service as well as at our 1030. Um, and to any new members who happen to be seating here this morning, thanks. Uh, we're really excited to have you as a part of the Bethany community in this official capacity. Other pieces that you should know about, basically what you need to know is everything for the service is in the bulletin that you grabbed on your way in. Follow along with that. You won't be led astray. There will be moments when we will be singing a, a variety of hymns. Those are in the red hymnals in the pew backs in front of you. So just kind of familiarize yourself with all of the surroundings. And then the only other thing I want to say is that when you opened up your bulletin this morning, you probably had a piece of paper fall out. And you were taken back to moments when you got a birthday card and money fell out. No, it's not money, but it is very important. It is the welcome card. <laughs> and we ask you to just take a moment to fill that out. We just want to know who is in worship here this morning. Um, and of course, if it's your first time worshiping with us at Bethany, thank you so much for taking a chance on this church. I know that it can be intimidating to walk into a congregation you haven't been to before. Just know that we're very glad you're here and consider uh, filling out that worship card so that one of the pastors can follow up with you in the week ahead. Finally, just a couple announcements about our life together. We like to let everyone know um, some of the pieces that are happening in our community. We have some lovely flowers over here, I believe. I, I don't remember which flowers are for what, um, but wanted to uh, issue congratulations to Kim and Jeff Finnan, who welcomed a grandson this week, grandson Levi. Um, also wanted to let you know that some of the altar flowers, I don't know which ones, I'll get, I'll get more details on that, um, are in celebration. Uh, Rachel and Catherine Kat Ruvald are celebrating their 11th wedding anniversary. So we wish them a happy anniversary. Also on a sadder note, um, longtime member Gloria Patton passed away last week. The family's still working on arrangements. There likely won't be a memorial service till the spring, but please hold that family in your prayers. And also Lisa Tupper's grandfather passed away this past week. So we hold um, her family in our prayers as well. I believe that that's everything that you need to know at the beginning of our worship service. I ask you uh, now to join me in singing our opening hymn number 308. And if you would please rise and face the cross as it enters.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Holy God, our strength and our Redeemer, by your Spirit hold us forever, that through your grace we may worship you and faithfully serve you, follow you, and joyfully find you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Our first lesson is found in the Old Testament in the Bible in front of you. It is on page 753. It's from the book of Isaiah. Isaiah 49, beginning with verse 1. Again, page 753. Here the servant identified as Israel, speaks for herself and describes her honored mission. Called before her birth like Jeremiah and John the Baptist, the servant is not only to restore Israel. The servant's ultimate assignment is to bring news of God's victory to the ends of the earth. God in faithfulness has chosen Israel for this task. Beginning with chapter uh, 49, verse 1. Listen to me, O coastlands. Pay attention, you peoples from far away. The Lord called me before I was born. While I was in my mother's womb, he named me. He made my mouth like a sharp sword. In the shallow of his hand, he hid me. He made me a polished arrow. In his quiver, he hid me away. And he said to me, you are my servant, Israel, in whom I will be glorified. But I said, I have labored in vain. I have spent my strength for nothing and vanity. Yet surely my cause is with the Lord and my reward with God. And now the Lord says, who formed me in the womb to be his servant, to bring Jacob back to him, and that Israel might be gathered to him. For I am honored in the sight of the Lord, and my God has become my strength. He says, It is too light a thing that you should be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob and to restore the survivors of Israel. I will give you as a light to the nations, that my salvation may reach to the end of the earth. Thus says the Lord, the Redeemer of Israel and his Holy One, to one deeply despised, abhorred by the nations, the slave of rulers. Kings shall see and stand up, princes, and they shall prostrate themselves because of the Lord who is faithful, the Holy One of Israel, who has chosen you. The word of the Lord. Please rise for the gospel acclamation. Our gospel reading comes from John chapter 1. Glory to you, O Lord. This reading can be found on page 95 in the New Testament, in the back portions of your Bible. The reading begins with verse 29. The next day, John the Baptist saw Jesus coming toward him and declared, Here is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. 
This is he of whom I said, after me comes a man who ranks ahead of me because he was before me. I myself did not know him, but I came baptizing with water for this reason, that he might be revealed in Israel. And John testified, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and it remained on him. I myself did not know him, but the one who sent me to baptize with water said to me, He on whom you see the Spirit descend and remain is the one who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. And I myself have seen and have testified that this is the Son of God. The next day, John again was standing with two of his disciples, and as he watched Jesus walk by, he exclaimed, Look, here is the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard him say this, and they followed Jesus. When Jesus turned and saw them following, he said to them, What are you looking for? They said to him, Rabbi, which translated means teacher, where are you staying? He said to them, Come and see. They came and saw where he was staying, and they remained with him that day. It was about four o'clock in the afternoon. One of the two who heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first found his brother Simon and said to him, We have found the Messiah, which translated means anointed. He brought Simon to Jesus, who looked at him and said, you are Simon, son of John. You are to be called Cephas, which is translated Peter. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, Lord. You may be seated, and I hope there are some young people out in the crowd, some kiddos to come on up and talk with me. Hi, guys. Here's some people coming good. You guys want to sit around here? Chat. Hi. Come on up. Just a few of us this morning. Yeah, kind of a close group. You guys want to come around, sit over here so I can see you? Or girls, do you want to come around here? Okay, good. Thank you. I want to see all your beautiful, bright, smiling faces. Hi. How are you this morning? Is it kind of early? Not too early, though, right? You're used to going to school in the morning, so it's very nice. So, today in the book of Isaiah, the prophet Isaiah says that God knew us before we were even born. The prophet Isaiah is talking about himself, but he's also talking about each one of us. Isn't that kind of cool that God knew us before we were even born? And God calls us to do things in our lives. So what are some things you like to do? Tell me some things you like to do. Yeah. Play basketball? Yeah. What else? Do, what did you say? Paint? I love to paint too. Yeah. What are some other things you like to do? Play with clay. Wow, you're very artsy. That's cool. What else? What do you like to do? Don't know? You have a lot of interests? Do you like games? Yeah. Well, and God calls us to do all kinds of things in our lives and things that we enjoy, too. And sometimes we call these things a calling. So sometimes when we live in our lives, we do something, and like a job when we're adults, right? And we earn money and we do things, but we can call this a calling. Sometimes we do something special and we serve God in special ways. And so that's like a calling. What could God be calling us to do in our lives? Kind of an interesting thought. I was kind of called to be a pastor. That's kind of cool, so that's why I'm here. But we can be called to do all kinds of things. We can be called to be friends with each other, to be nice to each other. We can be called to be teachers and firemen and, and all kinds of different things. Veterinarians. Do any of you like animals? Yeah? Yeah, you like animals? Good. You like small animals? Yeah, animals are cool. So there are all kinds of things that we might be called to do in our lives to serve God. Because anything that we do in our lives, we can serve God. How can we serve God? By doing 
anything. What can, how can we serve God? Yeah. To share. to share. That's a great thing. How else can we serve God? You know something else? Hmm? Can we love each other? By showing love? Does Jesus show love? Je- what was Jesus called to do? Do we know? We talk about that in the gospel reading today. <coughs> a little bit. You forgot that's okay. Well, so we find out that he is who? He's the son of who? Jesus is the son of? God. God. Right, exactly. So we find out that Jesus is the son of God, and he was called to share God's love with the world. But you know what? God says that we're all called to share God's love with the world. Do you think you guys can do that? Yeah? Can you share God's love with the world? Can you be kind to one another and show kindness? Even in doing your fun things, even playing basketball, or even when painting a picture. How can you show love when you're playing basketball? Pass to someone? Yeah, exactly. How can you show love when you're painting a picture? To give the picture to someone, like maybe your mom or a family member? Yeah, exactly. Okay, now I have something else that I want us to do. Can we each take part of this string? and kind of wrap, like stand in a circle with this string. Can we do that? Here, take one end. Okay. All right. Okay, hold on to a piece this of the string. It is a long string. There, can we hold on to it? You want to hold on to it? There you go. Get a little piece and hold on tight. There, can you hold on to it? There you go. All right. Good. So we're all holding on. I'm going to wrap this around. Okay. So here, you want to take that in too? Okay. There you go. So we're all holding on. So we've all got a piece, right? Are we touching each other though? No. But with the string, we're connected, right? We are. And do you know what connects us no matter where we are? The Holy Spirit. Can we always see the Holy Spirit? No, we can't see the Holy Spirit, even though we can see the string, right? But the Holy Spirit connects us no matter where we are. We're all connected to each other because we're children of God. Pretty cool, right? So we can always show our love to each other because we're all connected through God and through the Holy Spirit, which is a force that shows love to us and protects us and guides us in our life. Do you know who gave us the Holy Spirit? God through Jesus. Jesus gave us the Holy Spirit. Pretty cool, right? So we're all connected. Can you hold on to your string and then close your eyes and we're going to say a prayer. Can you repeat after me? Okay. Dear God, thank you for your love. Thank you for giving us the Holy Spirit. And thank you for giving us gifts to share with the world. We love you, God. Amen. Thanks, guys, for coming up. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you. I'll take my Holy Spirit string back. Thank you. All right. So here in the Gospel of John, we have Jesus' call story, which is pretty momentous. And we're talking about that this morning with our young people today. Callings. We all have callings in our lives. And we have Jesus proclaimed as a religious authority for the Jews. And as I was thinking about these passages earlier this week alongside the God's Word for the week, cohort this week um, at Bethany, uh, I realized that no one is called by God on their own. So you don't just kind of get up and decide, well, I'm going to do this because I'm called by God. Not necessarily. Not so fast. Um, Those who go into ministry, those who have followed the path of spiritual discernment, don't just decide that they're called one day. They are usually told by people that they trust, people who surround them. 
Usually when we do something, we've heard, oh, you'd be really good at that. A lot of times we're supported by those around us to go and do something special with our lives. And I know that's how it was for me. I didn't just wake up and decide that I wanted to go into ministry. I was encouraged and told by people that I should do it. And John the Baptist was that person for Jesus. John prepared the way for Jesus because he imparted his own hard-won authority upon Jesus. He shared the message that Jesus was someone to follow. Without John, we don't know how Jesus would have gained traction. Maybe it would have taken longer, or how would he have gained that, that kind of authority? But he's granted that by John. So I know that I wouldn't be here today without encouragement of mentors and friends and spiritual mentors and leaders. And so we wonder if the same is true about the Son of God. He didn't stand up in front of this crowd of people and claim this authority for himself. He didn't say, ah, yes, the Spirit shines upon me, and now I will be so-and-so, and I will be the Son of God, and I will lead, and I will do this. He doesn't say any of that. In fact, in this passage, he barely speaks. John does a lot of the speaking, and John is the one who prepared the way for Jesus. So someone else had to demonstrate that he was worth following in the first place. And it had to be someone who already had so much trust within the Jewish community. And the scripture passage from Isaiah hints at something even bigger than Jesus' call story. Isaiah proclaims that we are all called to live like Jesus, to be servants to God in the unique ways that only we can. We all have gifts to share. And Isaiah is saying, you, people of Israel, and we are those people today too. We have something to offer God. We have something to offer this world through our love and through God's grace. Isaiah says, you are my servant, Israel, in whom I will be glorified. God is speaking to us, to each of us, today and in all days. For we are adopted into the promise of Israel. We are God's children and followers of the risen Christ. Each of us is uniquely called to carry on the message of God's love for the world. In the many faces of Christology, Tyron Imbody writes, the relationship between Jesus and the disciple is transcended, and the follower becomes not a Christian, but a Christ. We have Jesus in us. We have the message of Christ written on our hearts, and we have what it takes to share this message with the world. We are uniquely called to be ourselves, to be who we are, and to live into the Christ within us in order to share God's light. That is part of what Isaiah is talking about, and that is what John is proclaiming to the Jewish people. Jesus is the one light that we follow, but because of Jesus and because of the gift of the Holy Spirit, we carry that light within us every day. Each one of us has been called since before we were born, as Isaiah says. Before we were made in our mother's womb, God knew us even then, even there. What an amazing thing and something so crucial that we cannot allow ourselves to forget who we truly are, chosen, called and beloved by God. And you may be wondering, as I have many times, how are we to do this thing? How are we to be Christ in this world, in a world that hurts and aches for love? I assure you that we cannot do it alone, but by this gift that Jesus brought us. 
the gift of the Holy Spirit. Through the gift of the Holy Spirit, we can do all things. When you allow the Holy Spirit to guide your life, even the little, most inane moments, you are connected to others in ways you might never have thought possible. The door to the kingdom of God is opened wide right here and right now. I'll give you an example from my own life. I ask the Holy Spirit to help guide me whenever I visit people in the hospital or in their homes. I ask the Holy Spirit to give me words of peace and comfort, and if there are no words to be shared, to just be a presence of peace and comfort. Jesus invites us into this space in all aspects of our lives, not just in the moments that feel difficult or confusing, that we're not sure how to handle. Jesus invites us to lean into the Holy Spirit in all that we do, that our lives may be examples of God's love and our own hope for the world. When we ask what the Holy Spirit can offer us at any given moment, we may find that we're more open to those around us, that we're more open to the beauty, to the truth, to hope and goodness in any situation, even in, in the most ordinary moments of our lives. I think sometimes we can feel so unworthy of God's love that we don't realize how truly special and important we are, how crucial we are to showing God's love. If Isaiah in this call story from John tells us anything, it tells us that we have a role to play, that we are Christ's own beloved people, servants of a message of love and hope for all the world. And we are not called to try to make people behave or think or act just like us. No, we're called to merely love others as Jesus showed us how to. They will know Christ through our love. And so it isn't about having all the right answers or being able to argue our way to heaven. No, it's about loving those who feel unlovable, bringing hope into a hurting world, sitting with others in their pain, and just being there. And the Holy Spirit can bring this out in each and every one of us in ways unique to who we are. We all have different gifts and abilities, and everyone in the world is different and diverse, so it makes sense that we would have different gifts to reach different people. God is always at work in the world. But when we realize the Christ within us, we can be part of that work rather than sitting on the sidelines. We can be part of this amazing love story about God and each and every one of us. Amen.
I invite you to turn in your bulletins to the middle of page three where the Apostles' Creed is printed. We'll continue in our time of worship together by publicly stating this creed, one of the creeds of the church, as a reminder of what we believe and what it is that binds us together as people of faith. Please join me now in saying the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sin, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. I was trying to let you stay seated because you can now be seated now. Um, as, and I invite anyone who is joining the church today, any new members who are here this morning to come forward. Good morning. All right. Dear friends, we give thanks for the gifts of baptism, for these people, one with us in the body of Christ, whom we welcome as new members into the life and ministry of this congregation today. Today we welcome to the congregation of Bethany Lutheran Church, Chet, Krista, and Arthur Aliga, Andreas Asen and Rode Mola, Florine Betton, Libby, Paul, William, Theodore, and Matthew Bryant, Robin and Robert Dicker, Laura Eaton Ortega, Julia and Richard George, Dave and Ellen Howard, Matt, Abby, and Benjamin Lazas, Pete and Diane Middens, Tabitha, Andy, and Luca Pizzali, Nate, Amanda, Elevin, Evelyn, Solomon, and Miriam Preisinger, Brittany, Jonathan, Lucy, and Gigi Rogers, Doug, Alana, Van, and Otis Schuster, Margaret Stukesbury, Mimi and Lisa Tupper, Christopher, Tabitha, and Tegan Volko, Nancy C. Wines. In the Lutheran Church, we speak about baptism as that initiation rite and the beginning of our journey of faith. And so here this morning, we affirm the faith of our baptism as all of your lives and journeys of faith continue in this place. In baptism, we are welcomed into the body of Christ and sent to share in the mission of God. We're called to live among God's faithful people, to hear the word of God, and to share in the Lord's Supper, to proclaim the good news of God in Christ through word and deed, and to serve all people, following the example of Jesus, and to strive for justice and peace in all the world. And so I ask you, new members, do you, in Christ, intend to live out this covenant among God's people in this place? If so, say, I do, and I ask God to help and guide me. And now you're not getting off easy, the rest of you in your seats now. People of God, I ask you, do you promise to support and pray for these new members in their life in Christ? If so, say, we do, and we ask God to help and guide us. We do. Okay, so you heard all of that. You can go to them for help. They said they'd do it. And so now I invite you to turn and face the congregation. And you as people of Bethany Lutheran Church, will you join me in welcoming these new members into our fellowship this morning? We welcome these new brothers and sisters in Christ into this community of faith at Bethany Lutheran Church. I invite the congregation to stand.
The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Please share a sign of peace with those around you. There is always so much going on at Bethany Lutheran Church, and so I wanted to just highlight a few of the different opportunities that are coming up today and later on this week, uh, just so you are aware. A lot of them are printed in the back of your bulletin. Feel free to take that bulletin with you. Read it all throughout the week um, so you know all the things that are happening. But a few things to highlight. Today, as soon as worship is ended, you might have seen we're going to be having a food breakdown, which we've done before, where it, you load up rice and beans and those get sent out um, to families that are in need. It's a really fun event. I encourage you to stop by there. That's all in the fellowship hall as soon as worship is over. But a couple other pieces so that you are aware. Coming up next Sunday, we will be having a ministry fair here at Bethany. We're calling it Abundantly Bethany. We did something similar in September, I'm told. I wasn't here, so I wouldn't know. Um, but we're doing it again, and this is just an opportunity for you to learn a little bit more about the different ministry arms that are within the church, and maybe to, you know, pray about and figure out where God might be calling you to lend your time and your talent. Um, and so th that'll be next Sunday in the fellowship hall um, between services and after the 1030 service. So please make sure to, to check that out uh, and to hear about all the great things that are happening there. Also, this is really exciting. February 2nd, so this is in two weeks, is Super Bowl Sunday. And so we will be having all sorts of great Super Bowl activities here. There's going to be a, a tailgate party between the services. Um, but we're also, as we always will be doing, uh, the Super Bowl of caring. So we invite you to bring canned goods, cans of soup, etc., as donation that Sunday. Um, and actually, I'm told that some of those canned goods will be, you, you can use them to pay for games to play. I think that's how we're working. Like, give a can, and then you get to do a beanbag toss. Just get ready for that. That's going to be a fun event. And you can wear your team clothing to worship that day. You might have remembered, some of you saw my ugly Buffalo Bills sweater at the end of December. That's going to make a comeback on Super Bowl Sunday, and you're welcome to join me with whatever ugly sweaters you might have as well. All right. Finally, and here's probably the most exciting announcement of all, we have a lost and found section now, um, and it's moved, so it's uh, right outside of the Great Hall, if you kind of go around here, and there's big signs that say lost and found. It's the coat closet right outside the Great Hall. So if you've lost something, please go check it out, um, and, and feel free to stick, check there every single week, because we will periodically be purging that and donating it um, in town. I believe... Those are all the announcements that you need to be made aware of this morning. Again, many more are printed in the back of your bulletin. Uh, but here at Bethany, we say that we are together for good. That's kind of the tagline we've been using. And so it's so great to be together, and it's so wonderful to know that all of our collective work, our time, our talent, and our treasure goes towards supporting good in the community, good here, and good in the life around us. And so as an act of worship, and with this in mind, we'll now receive the morning's offering.
Let us join together in prayer. Dear God, you bless the church with so many people with gifts and talents, with desires and passions to share. And still within us, the callings that you have for us, allow us to, to see them unfolding, that your name will continue to be glorified. We pray, O oh God, that you would be active in the world, that you would continue to work within people's hearts and minds and where discord is alive that you would bring a sense of unity and peace into situations that could get challenging. We also ask, oh God, that you would reach out and bring comfort and peace to those places where, where we need your care and your protection and that you would also be in those places where joy is shared that our joy might become complete. So on this day, we lift up before you the joy of the birth of Levi and, and ask that you continue to bless him with, with strength and health and for parents and grandparents in the midst of that. We ask that you would be bringing comfort to the family and friends of Gloria, uh, Gloria Patton, that they might know the hope of the resurrection in the midst of that and for Lisa Tupper and her family as well. We also ask, oh God, for your, for your hand of healing and recovery to recovery to be upon Judy and Mimi and Becky, David, John, Fred, Nikki, and Christy. And we ask that you would bring comfort and peace to Laura in the midst of a flooded apartment, that you'll bring her peace in the midst of the days ahead as, as she moves from that. For all of the ways that cares and concerns can get beyond us, oh God, give us the strength to turn them over to you trusting in the way that you continue to watch over us. And bless congregations here at Bethany Lutheran Church, our new members on this day, the, the baptism that we will share later, and all of the ways that we gather in your name, that as the people of God, we might continue to show your love to the world. All of these things we ask in the name of our Lord and Savior, the Messiah, the Anointed One, Jesus Christ. Amen. As we prepare to share in the gift of Holy Communion, I want you to know that all who are in worship are invited to participate in communion here at Bethany Lutheran Church. But know that this is not an invitation from me, and it's not an invitation from Bethany Lutheran Church. This is an invitation from Jesus Christ. Jesus provides us with these gifts of bread and wine, His body and blood. It is by His invitation that all are invited to participate in communion here. We tell this story that as Jesus met with his disciples in an upper room in Jerusalem, gathered there to share in the Passover celebration, that Jesus knew that this would be the last Passover meal that he would share with his disciples as this would become the night of his betrayal. And so it was in that meal that our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. We join together in prayer as our Lord Jesus has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. Printed instructions for communion distribution you'll find on the top of page four in your worship bulletin. Simply as you come forward, we invite you to receive a piece of bread in your hand and to dip that into the chalice of wine, thereby receiving the body and blood of Christ together. Note the communion station in the very center will have gluten-free bread and alcohol-free wine. If that meets your dietary needs, we invite you to visit that station. Otherwise, 
one of the other stations across the front. Come, taste and see, the Lord is good.
May the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. At this point, I invite forward those who are finishing their terms on Congregation Council, who have just completed them at the end of last year, as well as those who are entering into newly elected offices within the church. If you will please come forward at this time. I know we have a mix of you here, so um, we're going to first talk about those who are retiring, or not, yeah, retiring is a strong word, who are completing their terms of, of, of elected office here um, with our thanks. And they include, um, am I reading these and you're doing the new ones, Laura? Okay. Kim Finnan, who is completing her term on the Executive Council. Uh, Brian Rula, who is also completing his term, and Jean Scott, who is completing her term on executive council. Our ministry council members who are completing terms include Linda Bryant, Allison Beaver, Allison's here, Rachel, uh, Deb Rewertz, Anel Weisenbuehler, and Al Youngdahl. We also had some that served on the nominating ministry team, Ron Gousset and Ron Kamenin. Also those who are completing terms on the Bethany Foundation, Gwen Grace, Jill McMahon, and Donna Scaltetti. So what I'm going to ask is those of you who are completing your term, and we gave you a a traditional gift of a beautiful picture of the Bethany Sanctuary. Will all of you please face the congregation and will you join me in thanking these members for their service? And we'll allow you to go be seated. The rest of you stay. They went through this a couple years ago, so you are here. So the people before you have been elected by the congregation to positions of leadership. We give thanks for their willingness to serve. In baptism, we are welcomed into the body of Christ and sent to share in the mission of God. We rejoice now that these sisters and brothers will lead us in our common life and our mutual mission as a congregation. The incoming members are, for Executive Council, Tim Eklund, President-Elect, Arliss Adolph, VP of Personnel, Judy Birchfield, Secretary. For Ministry Council, Kristen Hamilton, Faith Formation, Matthew Kirsten Gray, Hospitality, Marie Friedemann and Kathy Nixon, Outreach, Kathy Singh, Worship. For the nominating ministry team, we have Andy Gift and Justin March, and the Bethany Foundation, Deborah Bales, Sherry Kobel, and Aaron Walter. I also, wanna, oops, I also wanna highlight that Vicki Dobb is also here. Vicki is the newly elected leader of our Operation One Nation team here. <laughs> at Bethany Lutheran Church, and so we install her into that position today as well. A reading from 1 Corinthians. There are a variety of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are a variety of services, but the same Lord. And there are a variety of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. Friends, you have been elected to positions of leadership and trust in this congregation. You are to see that the words and deeds of this household of faith bear witness to God, who gathers us into one together with the whole church. You are to seek to involve all members of this congregation in worship, learning, witness, service, and support, so that the mission of Christ is carried out in this congregation, in the wider church, in this community, and the whole world. 
You are to be faithful in your specific area of serving, that the Spirit who empowers you may be glorified. You are to be examples of faith, active in love, fostering peace, harmony, and mutual understanding in this congregation. So on behalf of your sisters and brothers in Christ, I ask you, will you accept and faithfully carry out the duties of the offices to which you have been elected? If so, please respond, I will, and I ask God to help and guide me. Thank you. And I ask you to turn and face the congregation. And so people of God, I ask you, Will you support these, your elected leaders, and will you share in the mutual ministry that Christ has given to all of us who are baptized into this faith? If so, please say, we will, and we ask God to help us. Will you join me in welcoming these newly elected leaders of this congregation? And I invite the congregation to stand, and then you can return to your seats. And now may the love of God lift up your hearts. May the joy of Christ fill up your souls. And may the Spirit of God send us forth into a world that we might live out our calling, that God's love might be known and be a blessing because we are blessed. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. We join in singing together our sending hymn. I invite you to, to face the cross as it recesses toward the middle of the sanctuary as we sing hymn number 655, Son of God, Eternal S Savior. <laughs>
Lord.